Welcome to field theory. The prerequisite is basic ring theory. So that's the ring theory you find in first abstract algebra course. For this first part, we'll review the main results for fields from basic ring theory, and we'll give examples to motivate the rest of the course. We begin with definitions. Recall, commutative ring K is called a field. All the non-zero elements are units. So all non-zero elements have multiplicative inverses. With a definition, we split fields into two classes by characteristic. So recall the characteristic of a field is going to be the smallest non-negative integer n, such that if we add any element in the field to itself n times, we get zero. To find the characteristic, we form the subfield generated by one. And then two things can happen. If one generates a copy of the rational numbers, okay, we have the characteristic of k is equal to zero, Otherwise, one generates a prime field, z mod p, okay, with p a prime, then the characteristic of k is equal to p. If we put all of these fields okay, of type 2 together, we call these the fields of positive characteristic. We're mostly interested in here fields with characteristic 0. Now, for examples, fields of characteristic 0, we have number fields, so the subfields of the complex numbers. Okay, our main interest here. We have function fields over the rationals. So here we're going to take, for instance, rational functions with coefficients in the rational numbers. So polynomials over polynomials. We also have versions with coefficients over the reals and the complex numbers. For another type of field, okay, so this type is advanced, so we're not going to say much about it here. We have p-adic fields. Now, p-adic fields are worth mentioning. Okay, if we take the rational sitting inside the real numbers, we have a notion of distance just given by measurement. Okay, you take the usual notion of length. For the p-adic fields, we start with the rationals. And then we can measure length by considering divisibility by a prime. That's going to make for a very different kind of field, and it requires a different intuition. Now, a main theme in the course is going to be field automorphisms. So we want to review some results on ring homomorphisms. Now if k is a field, okay, the only ideals in k are going to be 0 and k itself. So if I have a ring homomorphism, say phi carrying k to any other ring, then phi will have to be 1 to 1. So recall, if I take kernel of a homomorphism, must be an ideal, because k is a field, the only options are 0 and k itself. Now our definition of ring homomorphism, I have that phi of 1 goes to 1, so it can't be k itself, the kernel must be equal to 0, and that forces phi to be 1 to 1 as promised. With that, any homomorphism between fields is essentially an inclusion. That leads us to ask questions like, when is k a subfield of L? When are K and L isomorphic? And what are the field automorphisms on K? Okay, a field automorphism is just going to be a ring isomorphism phi carrying K back into itself. Now, if we're working with characteristic of K equal to 0, so the rational numbers live inside of K, if I have a ring homomorphism phi of 1 is equal to 1, then we'll have that phi is going to fix the rational numbers point-wise. Now, this idea of having a fixed field, field automorphism, and subfields, we put all these together, that's Galois theory. And that's what we're going to work up to. For now, we just want to look at an example to get an idea of field automorphisms. So let's consider the real number squared of 2. So this is going to be a root of the polynomial x squared minus 2 over the rational numbers. We can form the field q adjoined squared to 2. This is all real numbers of the form a plus b squared to 2, where a and b are rational. If I want to formalize things, okay, we note I have a map going from the polynomials over q to q adjoined squared to 2 given by evaluation. So I'll send the polynomial f of x to f evaluated squared to 2. This is a ring homomorphism, and it's on 2. 
So we can invoke the first isomorphism theorem for rings. To do that, we need to identify the kernel. Now, the kernel of E1 is just going to be the principal ideal generated by x squared minus 2. Because x squared minus 2 is irreducible over the rationals, it's going to be a maximal ideal in Q adjoin x. Now, that means we have a ring isomorphism, or in this case, a field isomorphism, between Q adjoin square to 2 and Q adjoin square root of x, mod or maximal ideal. We could have developed this in a different direction. So instead of evaluating at square root of 2, I could have evaluated at minus square root of 2. Okay, we'll call this E2. So everything would run the same. We'd wind up with our field isomorphism. Now I can consider okay, E1 inverse composed with E2. So what's happening here? Well, we're going to run this isomorphism backwards, okay, here. And then we're going to run this one forwards. So it's going to carry Q adjoint square to 2 to Q adjoint square to 2. And we follow what happens. We're carrying A plus B square to 2 to A minus B square to 2. Now, because this is a composition of isomorphisms, okay, this is going to be a field automorphism. To clarify the isomorphisms, for instance, E1, we're going to send the ideal for x to square root of 2. So for the inverse, we're going to send square root of 2 to the ideal for x. Okay, and likewise for E2. Now, do we have any other field automorphisms here? Okay, the answer is only the identity. So let's see that. If we apply phi to a plus b squared to 2, okay, we could separate everything. Then we note since a and b are rational numbers, they get sent to themselves. So everything's decided by where we send phi of square root of 2. Now, 2 equals 5 of 2. That's equal to 5 square root of 2 times square root of 2. We apply phi to each term. So I have to have that 5 square root of 2 squared equals 2. And the only possibilities are plus or minus square root of 2. So that gives everything. Now, to bring in group theory, we note the automorphisms on a field are going to form a group under composition. So in this case, we only have a two-element group. So the automorphisms of Q adjoint square root of 2 as a group are isomorphic to Z mod 2. Okay, it's a simple check that phi squared is equal to the identity. Now, how about subfields of Q adjoint square root of 2? By observation, we have the rationals, and we have Q adjoint square root of 2 itself. So how about anything else? Well, if I look for a K inside of Q adjoint square root of 2, okay, 1 is in there, so it's going to contain the rationals. But that's going to mean this k is going to be a vector space over the rationals. And now we just check dimensions. So the rationals themselves are going to take up one dimension. Q adjoint square root of 2 takes up 2. And that means there's no room in between for a k. So we're only going to have two subfields in this case. For a somewhat different example, let's consider the cube root of 2 in the reals. This is the root of the polynomial x cubed minus 2. It's irreducible over the rationals. This has roots using Dumas theorem, given as cube root of 2, omega cube root of 2, and omega squared cube root of 2. Here, omega is the cube root of unity, given as minus a half plus square root of 3 over 2i. This satisfies omega cubed equals 1. Omega squared equals complex conjugate of omega. And omega and omega squared are roots of the polynomial x squared plus x plus 1. Two things to notice. We take q adjoin q root of 2. Okay, this is going to be a subfield of the real numbers. So it's not going to contain all the roots of x cubed minus 2. If we consider automorphisms of this field, okay, we'll note using our procedures before, okay, the q root of 2 it's going to have to go to one of the roots of our polynomial. But since we're in a subfield of the reals, it can only go to the cube root of 2. So that means the only automorphism is the identity. Now, it doesn't seem like there's a lot going on here. If we consider our setup using polynomials, okay, well, if we work that out, 
we're just going to have isomorphisms between Q-adjoined roots of the polynomials. Okay, so these are all going to be isomorphic as fields. So it's a little bit better. To really get something useful, I'll instead want to consider Q-adjoined cube root of 2 and omega. Now, in here, if we want automorphisms, okay, well, if we look at our polynomials, so x cubed minus 2 and x squared plus x plus 1, possibilities are, okay, I could send the cube root of 2 to cube root of 2, omega cube root of 2, and omega squared cube root of 2. And for omega, we could send it to omega or omega squared. Okay, and omega squared, let's just go correspond to complex conjugation. Now, it turns out, if you consider any combination of these, we will get a field automorphism for this field. That's going to mean group of automorphisms for Q adjoined Q root of 2 and omega will have six elements. So this group is going to be isomorphic either to an S3 or a cyclic group of order 6. Let's treat the automorphisms as group elements under composition. For instance, by 3, it'll carry q root of 2 to omega q root of 2, omega to omega. Now, I want to find the order of phi 3. So how many times do we have to apply phi 3 before we get back to the identity? Now, on omega, it's just going to keep giving back omega. So we have to track out the q root of 2. We apply phi 3 once, we get omega q root of 2. We apply it again, omega goes to itself, q root of 2 goes to omega q root of 2. We get omega squared cube root of 2. We apply phi 3 one more time. Omega squared goes to omega squared. Cube root of 2 goes to omega cube root of 2. Omega cubed is 1, so we get cube root of 2. That means phi 3 has order 3. On the other hand, let's take C given as complex conjugation. So this fixes the cube root of 2, sends omega to omega squared. Cube root of 2 just gets sent to itself as we apply C. So we track out omega. So omega goes to omega squared, goes to omega to the fourth power, which is omega. So C has order 2. Now, straightforward to C. Phi 3 and C do not commute. So the automorphism group has six elements, and it's not abelian. That means it's isomorphic to S3. To finish, Let's consider subfields. Now, by joining elements, we can get the following six subfields. Note, if we adjoin any two roots of x cubed minus 2, we wind up getting q adjoined q root of 2 omega. If we count dimensions, okay, we'll have 6, 2, and then 3 with 3. We'll see later on the recipe for pulling out your intermediate fields. What we do, we're going to take our automorphism group, we pick a subgroup, and then we take all points fixed under the automorphisms of that subgroup. That's going to be a fixed field. For instance, if we take the subgroup generated by okay, complex conjugation, so that's two elements, if you're fixed under complex conjugation, that means you're a real field. In this case, that's going to be Q adjoined the cube root of 2. On the other hand, if we take subgroup generated by phi 3. Okay, you'll note in phi 3, what are we doing? We're going to keep changing up the cube roots of 2, but we're going to leave omega alone. So, in this case, the fixed field is going to be Q adjoin omega. I'll leave it to you to figure out the other subgroups and their fixed fields.